Uh, yeah, so thank you ever so much uh, for inviting me here today. Um, it's such a, an honor to share a podium with such incredible uh, people doing such incredible things. Um, I, I'm definitely uh, at the start, hopefully, of my academic career. I feel um, I'm only just starting to sort of understand what research is about, really. Um, this is the first conference I've ever been to, so um, please uh, have a little uh, sympathy, I don't know. But um, I, like I said, I was really honored uh, to be asked to, uh, to sort of present this keynote. And um, I thought I would talk about something that I'd had a lot of experience with in my professional practice, but what I've also seen um, really becoming a very interesting sort of uh, element of uh, the creative world. Um, so this is a response to uh, Professor Carlos's title of creativity and uh, technology. So um, yeah, what I'm going to talk about, oh sorry, uh, so I'm here from Lees Becky University um, and I'm part of a very strangely shaped school uh, with the School of Computing, Creative Technologies and Engineering, um, which means there's a lot of very diverse um, uh, sort of subjects going on in our building. I've borrowed this, I didn't put it in, sorry, uh, but um, yeah, our, our, our corridors are full of um, uh, lecturers and professors uh, studying everything from uh, robotical engineering um, to songwriting, um, to 3D animation, to uh, film editing. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, rich environment for, uh, for collaboration. Um, but what I'm going to talk about is uh, the, uh, the idea of how cardboard or specifically corrugated uh, fiberboard, which is sort of the squishy sort of corrugated cardboard that you get uh, if you order something from Amazon or, um, or Ikea, um, and uh, how it's been used in really, really interesting ways in uh, the art world, in the um, scientific world, and, and, and beyond. Um, it, just a quick note how um, there's uh, US consumers recycle about 72 pounds of uh, cardboard annually. Um, it's a highly recyclable material, and um, it's, it's very easy to um, obtain uh, and use. Um, so this is kind of my uh, sort of personal journey with cardboard. Uh, so as I'm sure many of you um, did when you were uh, children, um, uh, it, it, cardboard is one of the first things that you get to play with. Um, so um, this is me uh, when I was about uh, three or four years old, uh, becoming a, a robot in a cardboard box. And this is me playing with my four-year-old daughter. Uh, if any of you got children that kind of age, you'll certainly know about Paw Patrol, which is this massively global um, phenomenon which is going on. My daughter is absolutely obsessed with it, so we built one of the, uh, the vehicles uh, from that uh, uh, show. Um, and again, so just something you can sort of pick up, use any kind of materials that you found around the house, uh, and create sort of really interesting sort of play spaces. Um, you can see that she, I got more interested than she did at one point. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a very easy sort of material to start to play with. Uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Liz Sterling, um, she's written um, quite a number of papers now, and she's been working with the idea of play in her research. Um, she um, been conducting uh, the DEN project for quite a few years, which is all about creating sort of spaces for uh, children to play uh, in really unusual places. Uh, she was at the Playful Learning Conference in uh, Manchester last year uh, with a number of other colleagues, and um, I'm hoping to be able to collaborate with her on a few different sort of ideas that have stemmed from putting this um, pro um, presentation together. Um, another thing that I'd like to sort of explore further in the future is the idea of um, television on, uh, on sort of developing play and, and creativity and construction. Um, I don't know, well, I, so the, what I, I started putting together was a series of slides about, or these, these set of pictures about things that influenced me when I was a child, sort of from children's TV. Um, I was, I was very conscious that this, there was, this was an international uh, conference, so I was wondering um, how sort of popular these kind of shows are in other countries. Uh, and I have the privilege of having um, been part of, uh, as Professor Hashimoto was talking about, um, a study abroad program. So when I was an undergraduate um, at Leeds Metropolitan University, it's the same university we changed our name, uh, which is quite annoying. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a, the Hiroshima University Study Abroad Program was, um, and still is, uh, an amazing opportunity for students all around the world to go and study at Hiroshima University uh, for a year uh, under a scholarship, um, just experience the culture of Japan and meet people from all around the world. Um, and it was an incredible experience for me, really sort of like opened my eyes and gave me a platform to sort of uh, um, 
just experience uh, everything, life, from a, a completely different perspective. Uh, and it's left me with a fantastic uh, network of uh, a fellow sort of uh, HUSA graduates um, that I can still talk to today. So um, I asked them, um, was there anything like this, any of these kind of shows uh, that encouraged um, sort of play and development of, uh, of ideas through construction? Um, and then they gave me a few ideas. So The Secret City was a, a PBS show in the US. Um, that apparently that, that uh, had lots of sort of construction. Um, the bottom left-hand corner is a, a Swedish show that again was is described as like a scouting show that, that encouraged sort of making. And um, and then they show on the right, Doki do Kana. Sorry, my, my Japanese is not as good as it should be. Um, but the, um, again, this is a very popular show apparently in uh, in Japan in the. Um, uh, sort of, I think from the 60s and 70s, sort of onwards. Um, so I'm really fascinated by the idea of these introductions uh, to uh, to making and making from very sort of like low um, technology um, uh, materials and how that can sort of feed through to people's careers as they go on. So two examples of people that I really uh, respect and, and sort of admire that have done this. Um, the guy on the left uh, is a British animator called Nick Park, a uh, multiple Oscar winner, um, invented the characters Wallace and Gromit, which have become sort of global um, sort of icons in, in terms of animation in children's sort of uh, TV. Um, he very much uh, came from that background, sort of very encouraged to make uh, just from anything when he was a child. And um, the woman on the right is uh, Simone uh, Gish. Uh, I, again, my, my Swedish is not good, so I'm not sure what, uh, uh, if that's correct pronunciation. Apologies. Uh, but she is um, an incredible sort of engineer. She has had an amazing sort of career, um, just sort of experimenting and doing really interesting things with her work. Um, and now she's like kind of again, uh, she's a YouTube kind of superstar, but has gone on to sort of um, go on to American sort of uh, TV and uh, collaborate with lots of really amazing people. She's trained to sort of go to space, um, and that also, her kind of creativity stems again from this background, this this uh, childhood of uh, of working with uh, with low cost materials. Um, the the show, the uh, the film that really inspired me to become an animator was this film called uh, Flat World. Um, by a guy called Daniel Greaves, uh, which again uses cardboard in a very sort of aesthetic way. I think I'll start rapidly going through some of these slides now so I don't run out of time. Um, my company was called Broken Pixel. Uh, this was um, uh, the, the animation studio that I founded after I left uh, the I Like Trains band that um, Professor Hashimoto mentioned. Um, I'll, I'll skip past the show reel because I will run out of time, but this is my studio. Um, I just created lots and lots of things out of cardboard throughout my career. So these are some of the spaces I work with. Cardboard allows you to work in very kind of dynamic environments, um, very, very low budget sort of uh, projects, um, and, and create really interesting things. These are all the bases of the, the sort of the, the sets and models that we could create. But we created quite amazing kind of. Um, uh, sort of items that were just sort of, again, very low budget, very kind of easy to create um, uh, as we went along. <clears throat> and again, uh, interesting kind of uh, environments to, to work with. Um, and that's kind of the detailing uh, that you can see. Um, <clears throat> uh, and yeah, I worked with um, a, uh, a really amazing comic book artist called Kristina Baczynski um, to, to really sort of then uh, explore uh, the aesthetic uh, of cardboard. Um, Again, uh, more and more people I've worked with here. And um, what's, um, what we kind of do uh, in, uh, in the animation sort of uh, world is, um, is a form of rapid prototyping. Actually, a company called Leica uh, up in Portland, Oregon, um, do this incredibly effectively with, with really amazing technology. They use um, uh, color 3D printing uh, to create basically frame-by-frame -frame animations. Um, uh, to, to create amazing sort of uh, facial expressions on their, their characters. Um, but what we do in, in, in Broken Pixel is, is very sort of low form of rapid prototyping, which means that we can just build something out of our imaginations, just sort of with things that are lying around, and then sort of develop them into uh, quite interesting characters on a re really kind of rapid process. This was uh, just over the course of like a few hours, just thinking, okay, well, what does the, the skull of a, um, uh, of a deer look like? Uh, how can we fit that around a, a person? Build it, make it, and then and then shoot it. So it's it's become a really sort of valuable uh, process uh, just from that material. Again, um, we had a project come in where we were um, 
uh, the, the brief basically was make a music video for um, that looks like it was on the uh, Muppet Show in 1972. Um, and so we basically build uh, puppets that were uh, based around the band members. And again, this all happened over the course of a day. Just we got the photo in, we sort of <coughs> designed what the character might look like. Rapidly, rapidly built uh, because of cardboard, and it, it turned into this really kind of quite beautiful um, uh, video. Um, again, uh, this was just done in a day. Like uh, we needed an extra idea for the end of a, a music video, and, and the band went away and just created these these items. Um, and again, special effects can be done uh, really, really quickly. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit at length about this film, uh, but I will um, get through it quite quickly. Uh, but this is one of my most successful films. Won a few awards, got shown sort of internationally. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and again, made all completely in cardboard. Um, so uh, it was sort of done with very low budget, but um, it was quite striking, quite interesting, used quite innovative ways of creating these animated characters. Uh, again, I'll skip past that. Um, again, you see more, you see lots of cardboard in use in stop motion, just people's amateur works. Um, really innovative things done with um, special effects uh, with YouTubers. And um, again, big budget things like Likers, Box Trolls, all sort of based around the aesthetics of cardboard. Um, and in fine art world, um, you see every um, uh, sort of student sort of graduation uh, um, uh, sort of show, you'll see something like this, just like cardboard used in a really interesting and innovative fashion. Um, it's, uh, it's just such an easy material to, to get used to and, and, and uh, applicate. But then it gets used sort of like further uh, in different sort of... Um, uh, in the art world sort of beyond that. So there's really amazing sort of work being done out there with um, really beautiful uses uh, of the, the medium um, in different ways as well. Texture, like sort of um, human forms, texture. Uh, this is sound. So uh, Zimun from uh, Switzerland uses uh, this, the audio aesthetic of, um, of cardboard to sort of create really amazing uh, experiences. Um, scale and, and just beauty are used and, and then more abstract forms. Um, and it's used heavily in promotion as well. So... Um, this uh, uh, Dumbo, I think, uh, is his character um, that was, was an anime character but then sort of like adapted by Amazon to sort of promote their uh, work. Um, there's this pizza box that is actually sort of like stacked with technology. Um, so you get this pizza box and you can actually use it as an actual sort of uh, DJ sort of deck. Um, uh, the IKEA invented a camera made out of cardboard, like incredibly um, low technology, just like a, a few little, uh, a few bits of circuit board in there. Um, just incredibly easy to sort of distribute and use. Um, and, uh, and also IKEA, um, I got this just from um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, the IKEA Toy Box is an experimental uh, project that was debuted at the uh, Cannes Lion uh, Festival. Um, yeah, like I said, in June this year, and IKEA have been making this experimental sort of project with um, a few consultants and advertisers. Um, and basically, it's, it's what I've been talking about. It's encouraging children and families to uh, create items, just objects, out of cardboard, um, but using really innovative, innovative, innovative technology. So um, they found through uh, a lot of research uh, that approximately half of parents uh, from these uh, surveys said that they had a hard time coming up with creative ways for their kids to play. I found that quite upsetting, really, in, in a lot of ways, because it should really come from the children. But um, I do think that the... Um, uh, th this app is incredibly interesting. So um, this is just a breakdown of how it works. So you, um, you, you download the app. You, you, uh, you say what kind of materials you actually have on hand. So it's got quite an interesting database of, of stuff. Um, then you scan uh, the piece of cardboard that you've got in front of you. Uh, that gets read and sort of like using AR, um, uh, it shows you uh, a schematic of, of what you need to cut out from that cardboard in real time. Um, and then shows you what it should look like when you build it. And then when you've built it yourself, you feed that back into the, uh, the community. Um, and then the idea is it will create this reciprocal sort of like uh, system of, um, of people building things, showing them off, and then people using that as inspiration to build more and more things. Uh, and I think that's really interesting. It's, it's only just been sort of uh, beta, beta, te beta tested. Um, so if that sort of becomes a reality, I think that'd be a really interesting thing to follow. Um, just an example of one of the things they uh, sort of talking about. Um, there's other amazing sort of innovations going on there. This is uh, an Israeli inventor uh, called um, Isar Gafni, who's created a bike purely from cardboard, um, which is completely rideable, completely buildable, um, uh, which is going to have really interesting repercussions in sort of the developing world. Um, 
again, in a similar way, uh, that, that was just a passion project. This one is a lot more commercial, um, but again, using cardboard to create a uh, cycle helmet. Much cheaper, much lighter, but it still does an incredible job, really. Um, uh, it's sort of, in, again, in its sort of inception, but they're, they're pushing forward for that to be a commercial reality. And then, of course, Google Cardboard. Um, uh, it's, um, it's been around for quite a few years now, but again, it's, it's creating these amazing opportunities for um, people to experience VR in a very low-cost form. Um, uh, I uh, was really interested to see the talk by um, uh, uh, Luis um, Zaffirino and, um, and Lucas Silva yesterday. Um, they are building a, um, uh, a laboratory, a uh, physics laboratory in VR, which they're making available to people with Google Cardboard, which uh, I think was actually fantastic to see. Um, so again, the, the, the being here and being part of this uh, uh, conference is helping sort of let me see uh, different things that are going on out there. Uh, another story from, uh, from fairly local. Um, this was uh, a good news story in a, 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 the Miami Herald uh, in which um, there was this emergency sort of uh, medical procedure and the, um, uh, oops, um, the, uh, the surgeons were able to use Google Cardboard to construct uh, and, and VR software to construct like a 3D uh, model of the, um, uh, the, the patient's um, sort of situation and were able to practice the, uh, the, the operation beforehand and, and it, it, was, uh, it was a really amazing kind of uh, good news story. Um, so yeah, uh, again, looking at the future of, of using cardboard, um, people like Simone are uh, really pushing uh, things forward on YouTube, like the idea of making things. Um, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of um, uh, very successful uh, websites that show, show different things. So this one, um, just uh, people making interesting sort of objects uh, that have, like, it, it, it starts people off with an understanding of engineering uh, really early on. Uh, and what I wanted to finish on was uh, this product uh, by um, the uh, Japanese uh, software company Nintendo, well, hardware as well, uh, called Nintendo Labo, which is, uh, was launched earlier this year. Um, and it uses cardboard in a really interesting way with, with quite incredible technology. So it's got a, a Nintendo Switch here, which is their newest games console. Um, and if you look at this, uh, th these are called the Joy-Con, and they sort of are packed full of technology. There's a lot of um, haptic feedback that comes from them. There's, um, it's just built with loads of uh, gyro sensors, but there's also um, a, uh, a really high resolution um, IR camera built into it. Um, and what they've done with, with these devices that, um, uh, that, uh, that, that come with the Labo set is they've used really low uh, budget and low kind of um, technology elements with the cardboard. Um, I'll just, I will play that just in the background. Um, uh, to, um, to sort of create uh, these really, really innovative uh, pieces of technology that can do quite interesting things. I don't know if that's going to play or not. I will uh, I'll just cut out. Um, they've, uh, they've been really pushing it in interesting ways. So they've um, teamed up with, um, uh, uh, is his first name somebody? Bill Nye, thank you. He's, uh, I know he's really big in America. Um, uh, but yeah, so um, he's been sort of pushing uh, the, the use of this. And um, the idea, again, it's, uh, it's been very popular with my daughter. Um, and what one of the things you can do uh, with it is, um, is use the haptic feedback to sort of just control this cardboard um, toy, uh, basically, around, uh, around the room. But it does much more complicated things as well. There's one uh, kit that you can buy that turns you into a, a robot. And... Um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the engineering behind this is incredible. Like the, the insides of this backpack, uh, just full of different pulleys and switches and things. Um, it's, uh, it's been something that's, that's really helping children um, understand physics, understand um, construction, and also understand uh, programming. So what happens when you've sort of built your, your um, Nintendo Labo products is that then it, it literally lifts a lid. It says, have a look at how all this works, and then you have a go at reprogramming. So it's, it's a very basic sort of modular programming language that basically says when you do something, something happens. Um, but it does go into some depth, and, it's cre and, and people are starting to create really amazing things. Um, so, I mean, this is an example of um, a, uh, a, a game and watch sort of uh, re recreation. Um, really, really complex sort of uh, ideas coming out of it. Um, and it's, it's, it's encouraging people to really sort of play and experiment and, um, and do, do really cool stuff. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll leave it there. I realize I'm uh, running out of time. Um, but, oh, yeah, and, and it's been sort of fed back into classrooms um, 
and, um, and hopefully the idea is that more and more people will start to use this from a really early age and it's another um, another way for sort of young people to, to get into coding, get into sort of programming, get into building and getting into engineering and uh, I really think it's something that's, uh, that can be used sort of in the wider community to, um, uh, to sort of really advance sort of science uh, and technology. Um, so yeah, thank you very much and um, yeah, I think it's time for questions.